Hello friends, I am Ram, Romeo Alpha Mike and my call sign is VU3 X-ray Victor Radio and today I would like to demonstrate SI5351 uh, DDS based uh, clock generator using ATtiny13 microcontroller and this is my setup it is AT tiny 13 microcontroller 27 megahertz oscillator for SA5351 and two 4.7 pull up resistors for SDA and SCL lines SA5351 and 1000 uh, PF uh, output capacitor that is connected to the frequency counter here and this is LM317 voltage regulator. I am using 3.3 volt to run both uh, ATtiny13 and SI5351. Since both are uh, running at 3.3 volt, we no need any uh, level shift uh, transistors. Just it is uh, line to line, it is working. And I connected that with a 9 volt battery, it is going here. And after LM317, it is a 3.3 volt here and there are three uh, uh, inputs one is a analog input used as a tuning knob uh, using uh, by rotating this potentiometer we can change the frequency and another uh, input is band selector so we can change between any bands by pressing this button and another input is connected to a MOS key. So it is my homebrew MOS key, pure brass and handmade. <laughs> nice one. Okay. <clears throat> to hear the tone, now I'm uh, using my own homebrew transceiver, also tuned to 40 meters. It is a CW only transceiver. So let us try now. So if you want to change the frequency, I simply rotate the knob. Uh, for your understanding, I am pressing down the key and changing the frequency. Okay, so now it is uh, tuned for... 70137 so now i can change to the another band or another range by pressing this button so it is changed to 70387 and i am tuning my radio It's going to 7052, 
25 kilohertz that is the range we can adjust using the potentiometer if you want to another uh, band spread we can we can program it and just simply press this button we will come to 70 okay so now it is 70012 7027 this is one range now let us see the circuit diagram uh, how the connections are made okay it is very straight forward not so complicated all up into pin connections here is the at tiny 13 microcontroller pin number 2 is used as analog input and i am using potentiometer for tuning i am simply taking adch adch value that will be between 0 to 255 then i will manipulate it to the required frequency and another pin pin number 3 this is also used as analog input here is the voltage divider so basically there are two states one is greater than 200 and another one is less than 80 that is analog uh, value by looking these two values i can uh, say uh, the microcontroller what to do uh, to transmit or to change the band itself the tiny 13 microcontroller doesn't have inbuilt i2c support so we are using bit bank method we can choose any pin among these 1 2 3 4 5 but uh, for my sake i use number 5 and number 6 number 5 is connected to sda and 6 is uh, sel and 24.7k resistors full of resistors and uh, i'm using clock 0 for transmit and clock 2 for beat frequency oscillator that will be uh, in future we we can use it but in this demonstration i am showing only clock 0 and all both the two ic using lm317 uh, regulator 3.3 volt let us see further detail about the programming okay the at tiny 13 or tiny 13 has a limitation of 1 kilobyte of program size in arduino world 1 kilobyte is nothing we are moving to <laughs> initially we used uh, atmega ng arduino ng not enough then we used uh, arduino you know not enough now we are using arduino x mega <laughs> it will be also going to be not enough but in my case i am using tiny 13 microcontroller which is 1 kilobyte only and my program is 1000 byte i still have 24 byte so that i can do some more programming and add some more features in future so i am basically using only assembly language arduino is for education and kids not for professionals so i am using only assembly language for all my projects microcontroller clock speed set to 1.2 mhz this is the default value uh, uh, set by the atmel chip manufacturer so no need to change any fuse settings there is no built in i2c support on tiny 13 but there is a very good uh, development or application node by atmel so i am using bit bank method for i2c data transfer at the rate of 100 kilohertz using only one timer 8 bit timer that is set for 12 milliseconds or 0.01 seconds so i will read the analog value of three inputs potentiometer mos key switch band selector 
so these analog values will be read every 12 milliseconds so why uh, our maximum speed 50 wpm we, for that we need 24 milliseconds so I'm I'm uh, reading this uh, value every 12 milliseconds so that is very enough for manual keying not for automated keying for manual keying 12 milliseconds is more than enough so let us uh, see how the frequency is uh, tuning happening so the frequency tuning is done by a potentiometer we are using ADC 3 pin which is here and we will get a value of 1 between 1 and 255 that is the analog ADC H value we will be uh, seeing in the microcontroller so simply multiply this value by 100 we can get 100 to uh, 2.25500 so that is equal to 25.5 kilohertz so when I set a base frequency of 7 megahertz let us say or 7000 kilohertz this 7000 plus 25 will have 7025 kilohertz that is our CW range so if I set 7 7 plus uh, 100 will uh, 7000.1 so I can tune between 7000 to 7025 kilohertz if I say change my base value if I change the base value we can get any frequency but only the the, uh, the maximum adjustable range is 25 kilohertz that is the limitations just because of uh, we are reading the ADC there is no encoder and uh, there is no pin for using encoder also and ADC pin 2 is used as frequency or band selection so by changing this button we can uh, change the frequency base frequency that means whenever I press this button the program will check for the base frequency if the base frequency is 7 it will be within this range if the brake frequency is set for uh, 3580 meters then we can get this frequency range so like this uh, any frequency we can uh, do between 3 to 30 megahertz uh, I will come to that point uh, later why it is 30 megahertz so as explained ADC2 also used to connect most key so we have we will read the ADC value so we will head to either greater than 200 or less than 80 and then we will uh, uh, use the case statement to do uh, to the microcontroller what to do with these two values either to change the band or transmit so far uh, there is one more pin PB2 used as a TX part so this pin can be connected to any relay or transmit uh, RX TX uh, relay output or antenna outputs if we wish we can directly take from the uh, most key if we want we can uh, take from here also so when it is uh, ground it will be plus when it is minus uh, this is plus so when uh, here it is plus uh, here is minus so vice versa PB0 and PB1 used as uh, SDA and SCL pins these two pins and right now clock 0 used as uh, VFO and clock 2 can be used as bead frequency oscillator less than 30 MHz so for programming I used arithmetic all the 32 bit into 32 bit multiplication 32 bit division and 16 bit addition and 32 bit subtraction all the um, arithmetics I follow uh, AVR Atmel's application note there is nothing uh, to invent it is everything is there so this is all about the TI-13 microcontroller now let us come to SI-5351 DDS 
so i set my frequency pll frequency 810 why it is not 900 okay it is coming to this because i am doing uh, arithmetics manually uh, or uh, step by step not by using uh, just uh, inserting the asterisk mark and uh, division mark we have to do the calculation uh, byte by byte in assembly so to make the mathematics easy i am using 810 mhz because 810 divided by my 27 mhz oscillator will give nice uh, whole integer uh, 30 there is no division if I use uh, 900, 900 divided by 27, I will end up with uh, 33.33333. So, because the formula is very tricky, we need uh, A plus B by C is equal to 30. So we have to, we no need to worry about B and C. If there is a decimal place, then it is very tough to calculate the B and C. That will increase the program size. I am limited with 1 kilobyte. So I took 810 MHz as my PLL frequency. Then 27 MHz is my crystal oscillator. I will get FVCO is equal to 30. So just because of this, except p1 in the si5351 register all other parameters are zero so i no need to write anything i just skip i just have to write only one this bit all other bits are untouched so the program size is reduced drastically how to write um, values into the register is given in the application note AN619 <laughs> reading application note of SI5351 AN619 is a nightmare if anyone can under the understand this application note in one night he is a genius but not me The register I used or which I could understand, most of the register are untouched. I have not used all the registers. I am basically using only these registers only. So this is what I, I, I could understand since uh, January, <laughs> uh, last six months. So not everything is uh, understood. Number 42 to 49, this is a frequency set. Registers to set the frequency. Number 3, 16, 177, 193. These are the basic registers to enable the power, reset the clock and all. Number 29 is PLL1. Number 32 is PLL2. So all other registers than this are untouched. Why do we need another microcontroller project to control SI5351? I am basically planning to use this with a <coughs> non-fancy transceiver like there will not be any display it is only knobs and uh, uh, really analog knobs and few buttons there is no bright lights disturbing our eyes so and it is very cheaper and alternative than uh, Atmega 8 or Atmega 328 since we can uh, uh, use it since we can program for less than 1 KB, why can't we use it? So that is the main intention. And second thing is for uh, beacons. Just uh, uh, after this output, if you put a MOSFET linear with the solar panel, we will have a very good beacons. And uh, this can be used for monitor our signals, uh, our uh, receivers also. So that is in my mind.